Hey guys and welcome back to a new video and today we're going to do something different. We are going to build a smartwatch app using Wear OS. For those of you who don't know what Wear OS is, that is basically the Android version for Google smartwatches and you can already see what we will build here. So that is an emulator here, a smartwatch emulator and we're going to build a little stopwatch. So we are going to see the stopwatch text here, a little time text up there and if we click play then it just works like a normal stopwatch. We can pause it, we can resume it, and we can also reset the timer and play again. So this video will be perfect if you've never worked with Wear OS before and built an app for that. So you will learn how you can set up this emulator, you will learn how you can set up a Wear OS project before, and then how you can write the code to make this work and, and how you can also make things look like they look. And before we get started with the video, a quick little reminder that there is an ongoing Easter sale active for all my premium courses. Till April 12th, you can get 30% discount on all of my paid courses. I really never had a bigger discount before. And to apply it, you can simply use the coupon code EASTER30 during checkout. And this discount not only counts for the single courses, but also for the already discounted course bundles. So if you've been thinking to get one of these for a while, then there is no better chance than now. So do check them out by clicking the first link in this video's description. And now let's get started with the video. First things first, you want to go into Android Studio and create a new project. You're not going to file, new, new project, and then this dialog will open up. And usually you would choose empty compose activity here if you were to build a normal Android app, but we're not building a normal Android app, we're building a Wear OS app. That is um, why we need to go to Wear OS here, Wear, Wear OS here in the templates and choose empty compose activity because we want to build this app in Jetpack Compose. This already has full support for Jetpack Compose and Composables, which is great. This would be the XML equivalent, uh, which just comes with a blank activity. This would come with no activity at all. So you would need to uh, implement the initial setup. And this watch face is basically the design for uh, yeah the, the face of your watch. So when you want to see what time it is, then there's also additional information that is shown on, on these watches, which you can also design. So you can decide how this looks like, what kind of information the user will see as well, and things like that. We're not going to do that today. We're going to use an empty compose activity, click next, and call this Wear OS um, Stopwatch, for example. Something like this, click finish. And then let's first of all take a look at the structure we got here. We have a normal Android app package here. And the structure will feel very familiar to you if you already know how to build Android apps because this is effectively an Android app. There are just some specifics that will differ a little bit because um, seeing something on a watch is of course a little bit of a different user experience than seeing something on your phone. So all the UI components, they will look a little bit differently and we will have some additional UI components which are specific for smartwatches, but we will go through these things in this video. If we open main activity, however, then this is the initial thing you will see. So you will already get a Wear app, which in the end is just a column that centers a certain greeting. And if we launch this, you will see that it actually doesn't work because we of course need a smartwatch emulator to be able to launch a smartwatch app. If you have such a Wear OS device, then you can also of course launch that on your real device, which is ideal. I don't have that, so I need to create an emulator. For that, if you don't have the emulator yet, you want to go to the AVD assistance, so the, the device manager, open this up, um, and then want to create a device, want to click on Wear OS, and you can have different variants of this. So some are uh, rounded, some are rectangular, some are squares. I will use the small round one, so it will look like this. We can then click next. You can leave this at Android R, download that if you don't have it yet, click next, and then create your emulator here. I already have that, so I won't create a second one. But once you do have that, you can select it here, my Wear OS Small Round API 30, and then launch this app to see what we actually get from this. If we take a look here, right now my stopwatch is still showing, but after the Gradle build is finished, we should be able to see our little initial greeting. And as you can see, it says from the round world, hello Android. And you can already see that there are some specifics here to smartwatches because we do need to differentiate between round watches and rectangular or square watches. Because for round watches, we of course have a different um, screen where our app might look differently. So these are just some of the challenges we have with our Wear OS development, but let's get into it and start developing our stopwatch. 
For that, I will delete everything we have here. Um, and by the way, this is just a string resource which differs based on the type of the watch. So you can have different versions of your strings XML depending on if it's round or not. Um, but just as a little info, we don't need this here. Mm, let's just remove all this code that was initially generated, also the preview and this wear app and start with a completely fresh setup here. Let's also get rid of this comment. And first of all, what really won't differ is the type of architecture we will use. We are just going to have normal view models for Wear OS app. So in our presentation package, we can create something like a stopwatch view model, for example, create that class, make that a view model, and in this view model, I will just put all of our stopwatch logic. I will actually only use flows here because I like flows very much. That doesn't mean you have to implement a stopwatch like that. There are also many other ways where you don't use flows, but I think it's a cool practice. So I can also explain a little bit about reactivity and how we can use such flows to easily build a reactive and bug-free stopwatch. First of all, we want to have a state flow that saves our elapsed time. So how much time has already passed for the current run of our stopwatch? That will just be a mutable state flow initially with zero milliseconds. And then I want to have something called a timer state. That will be an enum class we can create. So in our presentation package, new class, timer state, select enum class. And this will basically just differentiate the different states our stopwatch can be in. On the one hand, of course, running, we have paused, and we have reset. So the initial state will just be reset. If we then click play, we switch to running. If we then click pause, we switch to pause. If we then click play, we switch to running. And if we then click reset, we again switch to the reset state. And in our view model, we will just save the current state in such a state flow. So that's a mutable state flow initially with timer state dot reset. We're also going to need this timer state in our UI. So we want to expose the immutable version of that. So timer state as state flow like this. So we can observe and collect this directly in Compose. So now for the timer logic, I will have a private function called get timer flow, which takes in a Boolean whether the timer is running or not. And what this will return is, is a flow of type long. And the purpose of this flow is, the, the job of this flow is to simply keep a loop active as long as our timer is running and consistently emit the time differences. So for example, every 10 milliseconds, we want to emit that time difference of 10 milliseconds so we can add it to our stopwatch time. So the way this will work is we're going to return a normal flow using the flow builder in which we can now always call emit to trigger an emission. We're going to have a start millis timestamp here where we just save the current time in milli, so the current timestamp where we start the timer. And then we're going to have a while is running loop. So as long as this is running Boolean is true. And then we're going to have a while is running loop. So if that Boolean is true, then we want to execute our timer logic. And this might seem a little bit odd to you in this implementation here, since if we pass true to this function once, this parameter will never change, of course. So this will effectively be a while true loop in that case. And if it's false, it will not go in the loop at all. But later when we implement our flow operators, this will make sense. And I will explain that, of course. In this while loop, we want to have a current millis timestamp. So in every iteration, we now want to again save our current timestamp and then calculate the time difference compared to the last iteration of that loop. So if the current milliseconds are larger than our start milliseconds, the difference is current millis minus our start milliseconds. So just um, the time that has passed since or between our start millis and current millis. And else we're just going to assign zero to the time difference. After that, we can emit this time difference. So the potential flow collectors of this flow will then receive this, for example, uh, 10 milliseconds, and they will receive this emission every 10 milliseconds. After emitting, we want to assign the next current timestamp to our um, start millis. So 
system current time millis and then we finally delay this loop so that we just don't have these emissions too often but rather only every 10 milliseconds so this way we again assign uh, the next timestamp to the start milliseconds we wait 10 milliseconds and then we again check okay what is now the time and we again calculate the difference and emit that difference this is just the most accurate way to make a timer because even if this delay would take a little bit longer than 10 milliseconds we would still be calculating the real time difference it took for this iteration and we would not assume that we always delay for exactly 10 milliseconds and now what we really expose to our ui is simply the text for the stopwatch and for that we need a formatter so private valve formatter which will take our timestamp and format it into the pattern we want to show in the ui so that will be a date time formatter dot off pattern and the pattern will be first our hours then a colon minutes seconds and three digits for the milliseconds that is the pattern we need to use and now we can use this formatter in another flow this flow will be called stopwatch text and it's equal to elapsed time dot map so this will be triggered for every single time our elapsed time state flow changes um, right now we haven't changed that at all but we will do that one step afterwards and in here we then get the long value of the um, total elapsed time so let's call that millis and in here we want to map that to a different value which is simply a local time object which just reflects a specific time of nano of a day so we can construct that with um, the nanoseconds of a given day and since our millis represent milliseconds of course we need to convert that to nanoseconds by multiplying that with one million because one millisecond is equal to one million nanoseconds and then we can say we format that with our given formatter finally you want to say state in to cache this value and convert it to a state flow we cache it in the view model scope we say sharing started while subscribed pass in five seconds so that this block here will be executed five more seconds after the last uh, collector disappears and we oops we want Oops, <laughs> we want to pass an initial value of just our initial um, stopwatch text like this. So with this approach, we really achieve um, some form of reactivity because whenever this elapsed time state flow changes, it will automatically also uh, cause an emission of our stopwatch text and update the UI with the new text. However, right now, this elapsed time state flow never changes because we never did that. And right now, we also don't really use our get timer flow function and launch this flow to make this while loop actually run we want to do this in our init block and in here what we want to do is we want to have our timer state and call that flat map latest on that now we'll explain all that in a in a second let's just pass in our get timer flow function in here we get the timer state here and is running is simply if the timer state is uh, timer state dot running let's add this uh, experimental annotation by hitting alt enter on flat map latest this one here to our view model then the warning will go away and i can finally explain what the heck happens here so again similar as above here where we said elapsed time that means we now make this flow that uh, where we apply this flat map latest operator we make that dependent on our timer state. That means whenever timer state changes to any other state, for example, reset, or paused, or running, then all these flows, uh, all these operators that come after that will be executed. So whenever that changes, let's say it changes from paused to running, then flat map latest is executed with the new timer state, which in this case would be running. And we map that to another flow. And the flow we map this to is our get timer flow. So since we changed our state in this example to running, this timer state would be equal to timer state of running. So we pass in true for this value, which means this while loop will simply run. And all the emissions this while loop or this flow here causes at this point, for example, will then be sent into the flow that flat map latest returns. And as soon as our timer state switches to either paused or reset, where this condition would not be true anymore, then the return flow 
would simply be an empty flow because it would not even go inside of this while loop. So I hope it now makes sense why we pass this is running boolean here even though it never changes because with every single emission of our timer state we just construct a whole new flow. And again there are thousands of different ways of implementing a stopwatch. I just like to use flows a lot and I think many Android developers just don't recognize the capabilities and possibilities of flows yet so I think it helps to go into that a bit as well. However with that we're not done yet. We also want to do something with these emissions because uh, in the end this just returns a flow of long here because uh, all the emissions of our get timer flow will now be sent into this flow and we now want to do something with these. We want to say on each and we now get longs in here which is the type of emissions the get timer flow function returns here. So we now get the time difference every single time the timer flow function here emits something. So this will usually be called every 10 milliseconds this on each function and in here we simply want to update our elapsed time now because every time we get this emission we know we simply need to add that value to our elapsed time and we want to say our elapsed time is now it so the current elapsed time plus the new time difference so every 10 milliseconds we just add these 10 milliseconds on top of our already um, existing elapsed time and then we simply say that launch in to actually yeah, cause this to execute and run in view model scope and then automatically whenever this elapsed time changes by calling update this will again trigger an emission of our stopwatch text and that is just the cool thing about reactivity which we can achieve with flows that we don't need to worry about updating our stopwatch text manually now whenever this changes because it just happens automatically as soon as we change our elapsed time because our stopwatch text is directly dependent on the elapsed time this should only change if the elapsed time changes so now the rest of the video will be a lot less complex <laughs> than these flow operators something we still need in this view model is a function to toggle is running to simply switch the the timer state and here I want to check if the timers oops the timer state that value press alt enter to add the remaining branches if the current timer state is running and we want to toggle this state we want to update the timer state with timer state that paused and for both these cases when we're either in the pause state or in the reset state and we want to toggle the is running state we update that with timer state dot running so we switch back to running state and last but not least we need another function which is used to reset the timer so when we click on our reset button then we simply want to reset our timer state to timer state dot reset and we also want to reset our elapsed time to zero milliseconds so we can start from the beginning again and this will of course also again trigger an update of our stopwatch text and it will change it back to yeah just a bunch of zeros and that is it for the most complex part of our video we can now dive into the ui and get to a little bit of Wear OS specific development here to to build the ui that displays the stopwatch in our main activity that first of all is nothing different since we just have a set content block in which we can call any composable in here we want to get a reference to a review model which is equal to view model we don't have the dependency for that yet let's include that by going to our gradle scripts folder module app scrolling down to the dependencies and i want to paste these two lines on the one hand view model compose to get view model references inside of a composable and runtime compose which gives us the uh, lifecycle specific functions to safely collect flows in jetpack compose let's click synchronize now close this and now we should be able to see this green view model function here we need to specify that we are looking for a stopwatch view model and there we go then we can get a reference to our timer state on the one hand by view model timer state collect as state with lifecycle that's the one that comes from the runtime dependency so that the flow is not collected if the app is in the background and we need a stopwatch text which our view model also exposes so my view model stopwatch text collect as state with lifecycle and then i would say we start to implement our stopwatch specific composable um so let me relaunch this app very quickly so that will just be a column where we have a text for the stopwatch and then below this column we will have a row of two buttons on one and the play button and our reset button let's do this below here we can make that a private composable function called stopwatch this function will on the one hand need our timer state to know what icons to display for the buttons it will need the text for our stopwatch it will need a lambda on toggle running 
when we simply click on the play button or the pause button. It will need an on reset lambda when we click on the reset button and an optional modifier to change the appearance of this. Then as I said, in here we're going to have a column. For the column we're going to assign the modifier and just make sure to center the content vertically, um, center as well as horizontally, like this. The first element of our column will be our text that displays the stopwatch text. So simply text here and we want to increase the size of that a little bit to let's say 20 SP. I'll enter to import SP, set the font weight to semi bold and the text align to center. Then I'd like to add a little bit of spacing between the text and our buttons, height ATP, so ATP of spacing. I'll enter to import DP again. And then we're going to have a row with our two buttons. This will have a modifier of modifier fill max width and we're going to center these buttons horizontally. And then in here, how do we achieve having these round buttons? Because on, on normal Android, we have these yeah, rather rectangular buttons from a material design. But for Wear OS, all these UI components have actually already been adjusted, at least these material design specific ones. So if we use a normal button composable right here, this will result in such a circular button. So when we click this button, we simply want to toggle running we give it a text of, um, actually no text. We just want to make an icon here, of course. Um, so icon, the image vector or the icon for that will differ based on our timer state. If our timer state, um, if our state is running, we want to say the icon should be icons um, can we import that? Okay, it seems like we need to add this as a material icons core dependency. Let's simply do that. So I'll enter add dependency. Gradle will synchronize. And yes, now it knows that. Icons default pause. Uh, seems like it doesn't know that. Maybe we need the extended icons. So let's go to build.gradle um, and replace the core with expanded to get more icons. Synchronize this. And we need to probably re-import that. No. Let's try that again. Icons. No. Let's take a look at the if the oh I wrote expanded. It is actually extended, of course. Let's resync and now this should work. Icons. Yes, now we know this. Icons dot default dot pause. Yes, that works well now. And else, if we're not in the running state, this is simply the play arrow. So icons default play arrow and for the content description i'll just pass null here for the sake of simplicity let's copy this button and have one more for our reset button when we click this we say on reset here the icon is simply always um, constant so we can say icons default stop that is the reset icon um, and we need some more arguments for this button because this should only be enabled if we can actually reset the timer so if it is not in the reset state so it should be enabled if the state is not reset uh, timer state at reset and i'd like to change the colors of this a little bit depending on its enable state or i think it does that automatically actually but um, i like to make that a little bit less prominent than the other button because it look would look weird if both these buttons would be such a yeah, blue highlighted button then the user wouldn't really know where to click and which action is focused Let's keep it a little bit grayed out. We can achieve that with button defaults, button colors, and we assign a background color of material theme colors background. Actually, surface. We should use the surface color for these little less prominent um, buttons as per the material design guidelines. And now if we scroll up and call this composable here, um, stopwatch, the state is our timer state. Like this, let's put these on separate lines. The text is our stopwatch text. Toggle running will be delegated to our view model. Toggle is running and reset as well. Like this. Let's pass in a modifier of modifier fill max size. And I would say we try this out. This won't be final yet but we can see if the timer works at least. 
and I am getting a duplicate class uh, error here. I already know why that happens. Um, if you get the same, which you likely will, then you need to simply upgrade your Kotlin version and Compose version. So I built a Gradle project. I will upgrade my Compose version to 1.3.0 and the Kotlin version to 1.8.10. And then in build Gradle app file, we want to set the Kotlin compiler extension version to 1.4.3, which works together with Kotlin 1.8.10. Click sync now, and that should hopefully fix the duplicate class issue. Um, IDE error occurred. I don't know. Let's just launch this. There we go. It's working now. Um, we're lacking a little bit of spacing between our buttons, but let's try out if that works. Uh, yeah, that is looking like a stopwatch. So let's pause this. It's pausing, it's resuming, pausing. Very cool. If we click reset, our timer resets, and we can start all over again. That is looking quite good. If it's reset, we can click on reset, but only on play. Yeah, our stopwatch is working, but as I said, I want to show you a little bit more about smartwatch specific development here. Um, let's first of all add a little bit of spacing between our buttons. So going in here and say we have a spacer with a width of 8 dp. Then what I want to show you is, as I said, when we launch my already built app, then we see that we have a little time text field here and that is actually rounded. How can we achieve this rounded text? Well, that is something you might want very often for smartwatch apps. And you can achieve this with a special scaffold for um, Wear OS. So that's just a normal scaffold, as we know, for real Android development, which is just used to position commonly needed views on the screen where these views, these composables, should actually be. So in our case, this commonly needed UI component would be our time view. And we can do exactly that here. So on the one hand, you can see we can pass a vignette, um, a position indicator, which we're not going to need here. Um, that is, if you, if you have swipeable pages, uh, then this is an indicator that shows where the user currently is on which page and a page indicator. Um, but we're going to use this time text. So we're going to pass something to this time text. And that is actually already a composable we can use here. So time text, and we can change how this looks like. So time source, basically what it will use to display the time. Um, you can change the style. So time text style would be time text defaults dot time text style. And here you could change the colors, for example. For example, to change the font size to something small like 10 SP. And you could change other things like the padding, probably how it's curved, things like that. I've never changed that at all, um, but you can pretty much change how this time text looks like. If we then take the stopwatch, put it inside of the scaffold as a content, relaunch this, then we should hopefully be able to see our time text. And yes, there it is. And if we change the font size of this to, let's say 20 SP, then this is quite a large time text. So that's how you can manipulate this text. Uh, something else you might commonly want in a smartwatch app is the so-called vignette. Oh, whoops, vignette. In here, you can also use this custom vignette composable and say, for example, vignette position dot top or bottom or just both. What this will do is that um, that won't be noticeable in our app um, right here. Even if we relaunch this, you will see there is no difference. But if you have scrollable content, so you, let's say you can scroll a list or so a list of items, then the vignette will will cause that there is a little yeah, black blurred shadow here um, that looks like the user is actually scrolling below that shadow. It's, it's quite a cool look. And if you have scrollable content, that is something whereas apps commonly have. But other than that, I hope you like this tutorial of building a little simple stopwatch for smartwatches. That is something different. And if you like this type of video, then definitely let me know that down below. And also, if you're looking for more advanced Android Premium courses, you will find them in this video's description. So if you're looking to become an industry-ready Android developer, check these out. And other than that, I wish you an amazing rest of your week and I will see you back in the next video. Bye-bye.